Now, I'm going to lie to you. You know, when I'm digging to this case, it bothers me a little bit because I'm actually a blue lives matter I'm a t- type of guy. I support the police. I, I think we need more of them, actually. I get it. A lot of you guys are defund the police type of people. I'm just not that guy, right? I'm very, um, I'm very thankful for the people that protect and serve when they protect and serve. But let's call it what it is. These high profile cases, there's a lot of failures that's going on. In fact, over 50% of homicides in America go unsolved. So really, is our, tax, is our tax money really paying for anything important? Are they really good at their job? I don't know if that's the case or not. I know they're threatening people like you and me for even dare talk about the case or dare investigate the case on our own because they hate knowing that we might show them up a little bit. Now we kind of bump into a new situation. The officers in the Moscow Police Department while dealing with these Idaho murders are now being offered counseling. Isn't that awesome? Because they say they could be too stressed and all of this, so they're going to offer them counseling. I'm going to trigger some folks in this video because I'm going to be, I got a newsflash for you. I'm not a big mental health type of guy. Like, I, I, I'm not a grown ass man needing to talk to another grown ass man about their feelings. <sighs> Let's do it. Man, I'm not going to lie to you, right? I'm, I'm going to be just upfront. You're not going to agree with me on a lot of this shit. Bottom line is we pay these people to do a job. They're stressed out. There's, they say they're stressed out and now they need some, some, some counseling. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, I can't help but to laugh a little bit at that. You understand what I'm saying? This is your job. This is your one job. This is what you do for a living. If you don't have the mental makeup to do this shit, if you don't have the ability to do this shit without feeling injured, or then, bro, I don't, I, I don't want you to have the job, right? I'm sorry. I just don't. But let's go ahead and get into this story because with me, this is um, something I kind of got to laugh at. These are your Idaho updates for today. Guys, uh, I do want to say before we get started, first and foremost, thank you to everybody that supports the channel. Regardless of the method you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, truth is, guys, I couldn't do this each and every day as often as I do without you. You know YouTube takes me down most of the time. All my channels are gone. We're re- rebuilding some shit. Uh, on the way to uh, pushing for, uh, we'll just leave it at that. But guys, f- to the gun squad, thank you so much. We do have a new Discord now for all of you guys that we haven't let into the personal Discord, to the original gun squad Discord. We do have a new Discord for just true crime. It'll be the top link in the description box. Uh, by the way, while you're down there, if you too want to join the gun squad, if you find my content valuable, feel free to hit those links and uh, join. And you can also join my my other live stream and my news, my politics channel, but I wouldn't advise it if you're a snowflake. I ain't got time to hear y'all motherfuckers whining. But let's get into this. Maybe y'all need counselors too, right? Exclusive Idaho cops are offered counseling as public pressure intensifies to find a suspect. Bro, if you need counseling to do your job, let me just say this. I don't give a fuck what line of work you're in. You could be a chef, you could be a whore, you could be a cop. If you need counseling to do your job, you could be a YouTuber, you could be whatever. If your job stresses you to the point where you need to talk to a shrink, bro, get out of that line of work. It's not that hard. I feel the same way about relationships. If your husband or wife or your whoever... Stresses y'all out, y'all need marriage counseling? No, nah, no, nah, that shit's dead. You need another motherfucker to tell you how to make what your shit is work? Remember, this is your profession. You're a cop. Finding murderers is your profession. Now you need someone else to talk to you so you can mentally get through your job of, in your profession? That sounds weird to me. And I'm I look, I get it. I'm just not a big mental health guy. A lot of you guys are gonna disagree with me. I don't really give a fuck because y'all are probably retarded too, just like the people that need counseling. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on into this. Um, hold on, my damn dog's barking. Alright, so exclusive. Idaho cops are offered counseling as public pressure intensifies to find the suspect who killed four students with no leads or motive six weeks after the grizzly murders. I'm going to try not to rant about uh, counseling too much, but I'm just going to be honest, man. 
I can't stop ranting about it. At the end of the day, these are the people that we trust to protect. And Look, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. You as a man, I, I'm talking to men right now. Forget women. They're emotional. You as a man, why would I ever expect or pay you to protect and or serve me in that particular capacity? If you're such a fucking bitch that you need to talk to someone about your feelings, I've been feeling a little pressured. I need to go see my psychiatrist. Why, why in the fuck would I pay you to be an authoritative figure? Serious question. Why would anyone pay you to be an authoritative figure if you're so fucking much of a nutcase you need to talk to another man about how fucking stressed you are? <sighs> Cops my ass. There are still no suspects in the murder of four University of Ohio students. Officers have been offered counseling as pressure builds to find a motive. A police spokesman told the Daily Mail all officers are working through the holidays. That's not actually true. That's not what the chief said, and I, I have no problem showing you guys that. We'll take a look at what he had to say, too. Morale is high, and we're all committed to seeing this through, he said. Moscow cops are assisted by 62 FBI agents and 28 Indiana State Police officers. Cops investigating the quadruple student murders in Moscow have been offered counseling as the investigation moves into its seventh week, with police yet to name a suspect or motive and under, are under intense pressure to resolve the case. Yeah, it's because that's your fucking job. It's what you do for a living. It's what people pay you to do. Locked in the rooms on the first floor. It was one of these two. It was one of the two survivors, by the way. There's a lot of you guys that are like, I know I saw the, the guy with the little, the little cocked hat that says press on it. He said, he said, I know who called the people. He, they came up with some other crazy name. I can't remember the dude. Um, the, the other dude that he now suspects is the number one guy. He's like, I got proof. This other guy made the 911 call. No, he didn't. It says locked in the room on the first floor is one of these two survivors who placed the 911 call at 11:58 a.m. Plain as day, one of the two survivors placed the 911 call. Not not some other dude that, and his girlfriend, nothing like that. On November 13th because they were unable to wake one of the victims and feared she may have passed out. And I'm not going to even, I'm not, the only, I'm not even going to talk about that other YouTuber or talk about the person that he believes did this shit because it's, it, 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 to me, it's just a, one, a different name each and every day. And I think people do that for whatever reasons. They're just as mentally unstable as these motherfuckers that need counseling. Shit, let's roll the footage. Shut up. Roll the footage. Now, the optics. Oh, look, politics play into everything. Uh, Jennifer, and what we're seeing here is this local cop, uh, the chief, Fry, has been getting heat. Uh, it's too slow. You got too many people saying different things. You're not capable of doing this. He's got somebody telling him about the media or he's checking it out himself. He's not capable. What does a statement like that mean to you? Well, he wants to make it very clear that they have prosecutorial jurisdiction, that this is their case that happened in their town. But make no mistake, they are partnered very closely right now with the state police, and there are 60 FBI agents There's on a lot. this case. There's a lot of FBI agents. And I agents. assure you, the analytical group and the support group within the FBI that has lent themselves to this case is not being run by that chief, but rather being run by people in the exactly. FBI. Now, Jennifer, on this point of, you know, advocating for the job and how it's being done, uh, I have used the Gonsalves, uh, Kaylee Gonsalves is one of the victims, obviously. Her family hired a lawyer. I've had him on a couple of times to talk about it. Uh, you say it's a dicey proposition when victims' families have an attorney and they're weighing in the way uh, this counselor is. Why? Uh, because it's taking away from the case the time that law enforcement is spending uh, answering requests of this attorney, uh, having meetings with this attorney. And That's not true at all. That's not true at all. Do you think the fucking the, the, and detectives and investigators are the one having the meetings with the... I hate people. You understand that police forces have a PR department. 
And they have people in the office and shit that handles all of that type of shit. The actual detectives, the actual investigators are not having conversations with the parents' lawyers. That's not the way this shit works. I'm just being perfectly honest. And, and I hate when people do this, when they try to say Steve Gonzalez should shut the fuck up. No, he shouldn't. His fucking daughter was brutally slaughtered. He should shut up and do what? Trust the police? You mean the people that solve less than 50% of homicides? Fuck you. Why he should shut up so the, so, so the police don't need counseling? Fuck you. And fuck them. At the end of the day, as a dad... When you're told that these people have, that the police in America have less than a 50% clearance rate of homicides, why in the fuck would you trust just them? And I'm seriously asking you people watching right now, why would anyone, you, me, him, why would anyone, I want you to understand something. Remember when we used to get A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's? You understand that... A percentage that's less than 50% is an F minus. F minus. And this, and this, this fucking cop has the nerve to sit there and say, no, nah, y'all, y'all got to be quiet. No, no, no. You need to start talking more, motherfucker. At least to the families and earn their fucking trust. Then maybe, maybe they wouldn't have to lawyer up. Just saying. You, maybe they wouldn't have to lawyer up if you were doing your fucking job. So on and so forth is only taking away from manpower that could be otherwise used. That's not true at all. Crime. That's not true at all. Right. Now, uh, look, I, I hear you about that, but I also see their side of it. They're desperate. Um, you know, they, they, they get misgivings. They're not getting communicated with. I understand. Exactly. Uh, I, don't, I hate Chris Cuomo, but I agree with him. About that. Now, Joe, there are a lot of people who are aggressive in this situation. We have this emerging um, true crime investigator digital reality where people are looking at this stuff 24 7. And in some cases, they've scrubbed up some media information that, you know, they've added to the understanding of the context of what happened that night. But you believe it's a slippery slope that sometimes help can be too much help. That's right. That's just look at the sheer number of tips they got 10,000 tips on this case. Yeah, you should be happy that people are giving you tips. You should be happy that people are fucking trying to help you at all. When you have nothing, you literally have nothing. And so this is the route they're going to take again. You guys got to listen to the cops. You got to, hey, hi, I'm the government and I'm here to help you. Yeah. Go fuck yourself, right? At the end of the day, that's exactly what they want you to do. They want us all to shut the fuck up. They don't want you to give them tips. They, they, but yet they come out here and they say they do want you to give them tips. And I'll show you what he had to say here in just a second. This entire process is, is goofy as fuck. If they need to spend less time talking about internet sleuths, internet detectives, commentators, and more time actually doing something, because so far, I want you to understand, there's no murder weapon, there's no suspects, they have said there's no leads, and they need counseling. Fuck the Moscow Police Department. The, they, Moscow pays this, these people for nothing. Because I'm asking you, name one thing that they've done. Name one thing that they've accomplished. Name one part of their job that they've actually checked off. Nothing. Nothing. And the question comes down to how much of value do they have? And for the police part of it, they have to answer out every one of those tips that come out. We'll bet them out. If it means something, then they need to go and do that. That's why I think we saw even more FBI agents were added to the list, right? So it's always better to have more added than subtract it because that would have been a bad sign but the problem that you're dealing with is the sheer amount of information and how much of it is really going to amount to anything and that is something that the you know this is a day of reckoning i think this case too about how much pressure that we've seen put onto this police department ah. and uh, and the state and the fbi <laughs> and it, it is it is a mess 
Thank you for Man. Your Please go to newsnationnow.com. How much pressure? You, you motherfuckers got a co <laughs> probably a college kid brutally slaughtering four people. You know, what's the odds that this person is literally, it's not like, all right, unless we're dealing with a serial killer, we're dealing with inexperienced college kids. And you're under pressure. You need counseling. I know. It's a crazy world, huh? Chief Rye broke down in tears as he told Fox News, I'm a dad with daughters. It's tough. We're human. We don't go to these and just turn it on. It affects us. But we have a job to do, and we're going to continue to do that job. We're going to continue to push forward. I can respect that statement. Fry's visible emotion offered a glimpse into the toll of dealing with such a gruesome crime and a scene unlike any his relatively inexperienced force has ever witnessed. That's the problem. That's the point. That's exactly what we're saying. But you're the one saying, no, we're the real source of information. We're the real investigators. We're the real cops, bro. You guys are kindergartners in this game. You guys are sitting there still eating paste and shit. Still, still eating glue. The lead investigator, Brett Payne, is a 32-year-old Army veteran with just two years of policing under his belt. Counseling services have been activated and offered to all officers, all of whom who are working throughout the holidays in a bid to solve the crime that has gripped the nation. Moscow Police Department spokesman Captain Anthony Dallinger told the Daily Mail, from this point of view, from the point of view of taking care of our officers, we have activated counseling resources for anyone who needs them. And our priority, priority is to keep our force healthy as we work until we get the investigation to its conclusion. He added, morale is high, and we're all committed to seeing this investigation through to the end. It's being the holiday, it being the holiday is kind of moot. We're just focused on that goal. That's awesome. And then, uh, good luck with the investigation. He said, the police chief says he's still trying to put everything together. Is there any way of, of knowing right now, and again, I know there's things you can't say, but of whether this, uh, this murderer is, is still in the area or may be far away by now? He don't know shit. Like I said, um, we're not uh, disclosing any of that, but um, there's some of that we just don't know at this point. We're still <laughs> trying to put everything together. Um, <laughs> we can't tell you, but by the way, we, we actually don't know anyway. <laughs> it's sad, man. Speaking on condition of anonymity, by the way, the dude that drove the girls home, by the way, he's been cleared, he expressed little faith in Moscow Police Department's abilities and said, it's not lost on me that my job was to get them home safe. And this time it really didn't make a difference. This is the ride share guy that gave him a ride home, right? He says, those kids deserve justice and it feels to this community like the police aren't even trying. Listen, this is the Moscow community. The people in Moscow are saying that it seems to us like these police are not even trying. Just saying. Which is 100% related to how they're communicating with the community and people are scared, he goes on to say. He goes on to say most of us here have little faith in Moscow Police Department. We can't tell if we are watching qualified investigators who have a handle on the situation or if they are completely at a loss and grasping for straws, which is where I would put my money. Moscow Police Department is being assisted by 62 FBI agents, 28 state police, like we said before. FBI has brought in two criminal profilers in a bid to gain some understanding of who might have committed the brutal killing. So they're bringing in profilers and shit. They don't even have a fucking clue. They cleared everybody, right? Police are yet to recover the murder weapon, name a suspect, or given any hint of who might be behind the brutality. But they have cleared these people. The private car hire driver, two surviving roommates, uh, the, the Jack, or the, the hoodie guy, Jack, whom Gonzalez and Mogan called numerous times during the night, more than likely it was Jack the boyfriend. The sixth person on the lease who moved out before the school year started, those are all people that they've cleared. They said they ain't got shit to do with none of this. Very interesting that they're clearing people that easy, that quickly, right? Meanwhile, the terror reader, amateur sleuth, 
defends her claim. Female professors involved in the Idaho quadruple murders. And see, it's people like this that make us look bad. You tarot, tarot cards, get the fuck out of here, man. So she, she's still going. She's getting sued for defamation, getting blasted by the news, blasted by the cops. And Ashley Gillard, this woman's going even stronger. The cops have said Schofield, which is the professor, has nothing to do with the killings. They've now cleared the professor and confirmed that she was in Oregon. So that's why this news is being reported. The professor that the nut job fucking tarot card reader said killed him and was fucking Jack D. She was in Oregon the whole time with her fucking family. Schofield is suing Gillard for failing to remove the videos in which the sleuth alleges that the professor planned the murders because she was in a relationship with Kaylee, because she was in a relationship with Kaylee Gonzalez, a, a lesbian relationship. However, Gillard is refusing to back down despite police saying they don't believe there's a connection. She's not backing down at all. She said, when I go to court, and they see the evidence or they see how I connect the dots, they'll make a decision as it pertains to whether they want to continue to live in blinders or believe it. If they don't, I don't care. <laughs> you can go on and on. So this retarded broad right here, she's alleged with no evidence that Schofield perpetrated the killings with another student because Gonzalez was trying to break up with her. So she was trying to, she was, so she was fucking Kaylee, not Jack, according to this. I got it wrong the whole damn time. She was fucking Kaylee, according to this broad. And so she got with another student, which she believes to be Jack, oddly, to keep the relationship from going public. She's accused Jack D and Rebecca. That's what it was. The professor and Rebecca, so they, she, Rebecca, the professor, and Jack D, this tarot card dummy, has said has worked together to kill Kaylee because Kaylee and the professor were the ones actually fucking. Do you see how goofy this shit is? This is why I hate some of I hate the true crime community sometimes. A lot of goofy shit. New leak surveillance photo shows two female Idaho students inside bar just hours before they were stabbed to death. We talked about this and a lot of you guys said that the, the photo was fake. The photo was Photoshop. No, it wasn't. There it is right there in the news. And the person that actually has the photo, the person is uh, F former FBI agent Jennifer Coffin Doffer. I just wanted to let you know, this isn't something that someone uh, photoshopped on 4chan, as you guys think. There's confirmation that this is a real leaked surveillance photo. This was not photoshopped. And by the way, for you guys that didn't see my correction video, this guy right here is not the cop. That's the owner of the bar. The guy with the hat and the shades on top of him, this guy right here, that's the owner of the bar. That's the way it goes. Meanwhile, we got the police chief doing an interview. We're gonna tell, we're gonna take a listen to this real quick. Let's take a listen. Pretty good. Uh, we've given people time off. We've adjusted, so we always have people here working on the on the case. But uh, giving people some time off. Time to spend with our family. There you go. Um, and I know that it's Remember, everybody, they're working around the clock. Uh, he just said they was chilling with their families and shit. We did what we did, we could do to make sure people got to chill with their families during the holidays. That's all I'm saying. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying there's mixed messaging all the time. They want you to believe that the Moscow Police Department is just engine going 24-7. It's not the truth. Not even close. Probably incredibly difficult. So can you tell me a little bit about what officers are handling emotionally with this? <laughs> Emotionally, you know, I think all these cases that uh, any law enforcement goes on are, are emotional. But um, you know, we've got brought in counselors and, and helped uh, officers work through that. Of course, and we brought in peer support teams. Peer to, support uh, teams also give support, and we'll continue to do that as we need to. But uh, all in all, um, the officers are doing really well. Um, can we talk a little bit about um, some of the? The national attention this case has gotten, um, and specifically kind of the, the social media aspect, and a lot of I would 
to say like armchair detective. Sure. Um, how has that been in trying to do the real police work when you're getting all of that sort of attention? Um, it, it's new, you know, we're, we're not used to the national attention quite this big, especially with news crews coming to town and whatnot. But, uh, you know, we brought in a PIO team um, that's helped us out immensely um, to deal with just the um, a large amount of requests to do interviews. Um, the online stuff, you know, that's going to happen, right? I mean, that's just the day and age we're in. There's a lot of people who are sending us tips and stuff through that. Yeah, and let me, let me also say this. Because I get really irritated when you motherfuckers are like, nobody should say names or, or suspect anybody. Bitch, I don't know what era you grew up in, but we all grew up playing Clue. What's his name? Did it in the, in the bar or in, in the fucking ballroom with the hammer? Fuck you. I'm going to say who it is, whoever I think it is. I'm going to suspect whoever I want to suspect. I'm going to say names if I fucking want to. No, you guys need to not say names. You guys need to, you guys need to, no, fuck you. This is a commentary channel. I ain't one of you true crime motherfuckers. Just to be honest, like I said a million times, I'm just a fat dude on the internet giving my fucking opinion. But so many of you are like, we don't understand why you're playing detective and shit like that. Bro, every single one of us have played Clue. We're doing the same thing in real life. Every single one of you are sitting there clapping your fat fucking fingers together, little sausage fingers. You're, you're, you're like, oh, I think, I think it's this guy and this guy and this guy. You're doing the same thing. You just don't make videos doing it. So stop it. Let's call it what it is. And, and we're going to look into all those as well. So um, some of it's very useful. Some of it um, can be distracting. But uh, we're filtering through that, and uh, we're managing that, and the investigators are using the, the information that's good to continue on with that. Yeah. Do you mind if we move that mic down a little nope, bit? Nope, that's fine. Just kind of rub in. Get your mic right. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Um, you said, yeah, you said it's been kind of distracting. I'm sure that as you're trying to parse the, I don't want to say there's good tips and bad tips, because right. I'm sure you're running right. them all out. but. Um, as you're trying to parse through all that information, you said it's it can be distracting and it's probably a lot of extra work. Yeah, you know, we've had over 17,000 tips um, come in and, and we have a, a team across the nation that's looking at those and, and pulling uh, stuff that's good, but, but we want people to continue to. Um, even any tip that there is, even if they don't think it's um, a valuable tip, we want those because we'll determine whether they're valuable to us. And, that's right, and they'll and determine. Of course. So you hear him right there, though, telling you, no, keep telling us, keep sleuthing, keep giving us tips. Why would you want tips? For, uh, let me make, let me ask the question. These cocksuckers say, we don't want you sleuthing. Bro, where do you think you're going to get the tips from? You think there's 17,000 people in your little town that gave you tips? No. Majority of your tips are coming from sleuths outside of the town. Am I right or am I wrong? If we were to leave everything to uh, Moscow, Idaho, and just the tips from the people that are intimate in the situation, how many, how many tips would you actually have? Zero. You wouldn't have any. So I just want to make this clear. They like to they talk a whole lot about Internet sleuths. Meanwhile, at the same time, still asking you to send them tips. It requires sleuthing to have tips. We don't live there. None of us live there. None of us know those people. It requires sleuthing and digging and getting into shit. You, you think there's just going to be a random tip that we have that just comes across of us at our local Walmart? Hey, guess what I heard at my Walmart in Georgia? These people are dumb. And people may not think that they're valuable, but uh, we, we still want that stuff to come into us so that we can there you uh, go. look at it and decide if it fits our case or not. Then stop whining. A lot of um, law enforcement says even if you know something you don't think is pertinent to the case, maybe you saw something that you don't know is is the key, but maybe detectives and, and law enforcement know that that's yeah. the thing they need. That's exactly right, and that's why we've asked people, you know, with any pictures from, from that night or any video to send it to us, send it to our tip line. Um, we'll determine whether that's valuable or not. He always repeats that. 
We'll determine if that's valuable. We get it. You're the authority, dickhead. We get it. You're the guy in charge. Or so you think. Let's be honest. The FBI is in charge there. That's the truth. You're not in charge anymore, bro. There's a new sheriff in town. Let's call it what it is. It's the, the feds are in control in Moscow, Idaho, Idaho now. No doubt about it. Let's continue. And uh, we have a, Sorry about a my dog. team that's uh, looking at all that and, and bringing things together so that we can paint that picture. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we have a, a defamation lawsuit going on, and that's probably kind of beyond the scope of what you guys are focused Here we go on. with the defamation. Um, but it kind of highlights the, the national attention of the case and kind of just the, I guess, messiness of the case and, and what's going on. Um, can you talk a, a little bit more about, about that? And, and I just learned about that this morning on the news, and I think I read it in the paper over the weekend. Um, Imagine that. that. To do with the university. Imagine that. We knew some shit involved in the case four days ago. And you're like, hey, I just found out this morning. We know, bro. We already know we've known shit before you did. We know. That's the entire point, to be honest. And then you rushed and quickly and you cleared the, the professor, which is a good move. You should have cleared her because it was a dumbass accusation. But this is why Internet sleuths exist. You didn't even know that shit. And it's news everywhere. It's been news all for the last three, four days. The and the professor, and, and we're, we're focused on this um, homicide right now, so that's what we're going to continue to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, how do you stay focused on the facts of the case with all of that extra stuff going on? Well, I, I think it's um, part of what we do. It's, you know, we're, we're trained to investigate things, and, and we're fact finders. That's what um, an investigation does. It, it, puts all the pieces together so that we can paint the picture so that when, a, when an arrest is made and it goes to trial that um, we can lay that all out for a jury to um, be able to see the facts and, and see where, how we got from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. um, the property owners of that um, unit that the students were in Sorry about that. By the way, let me also reiterate something. Remember how I said less than 50% of murder cases are cleared? That doesn't mean convicted. That just means cleared, as in they believe they have the suspect. And let me tell you what's also thrown into there. If a suspect dies, things like that. It does not mean convictions. Less than 50% are cleared. And you know the conviction rate has got to be probably 50% of that. Let that sink in for a second. Do the math. It shows you how little killers actually get caught. Have you spoken with them? Are they cooperating with law enforcement? We have spoken with them, and they are cooperating. Okay. Um, as we're thinking about winter break coming to an end and students coming back, do you have a message for those students who are returning? You know, I think I stated in an earlier um, interview, uh, we want the students to come back. Um, we're going to do everything we can to provide um, a safe environment. But that really is a um, family decision. That's a decision that um, those students and the families need to make. But we're going to do everything in our power to continue to um, provide safety. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to change my shot here a little bit. Um, and as I do that, I'll ask you... Um, Are there, still patrols, are there still extra patrols? Um, Zooming in on that face. The university and, and how long are those going to be in place? If so? so we always have patrols going on on campus. Um, you know, it, it's an area that our um, patrol team, first of all, is up there as well as some campus officers. But I do believe there's going to be some additional um, state troopers in the area um, after the break and stuff. And as well, we've reached out to uh, Lake Tahoe County as, to provide some extra um, patrols just so that people um, were more seen and um, they can, you know, feel a little bit more comfortable. People ain't about to go back to the school until it's um, safe. And I know that you said you've gotten about 17,000 tips. Have those um, helped lead the case in a new direction? Have they helped kind of divert where you guys are looking? 
So like I said, we're taking the facts that we know, we're taking all tips that we know, and we're, we're putting those pieces to the puzzle together and painting that picture. And um, as we continue to investigate, um, we'll update as, as soon as we can, but we're, we're moving forward on this investigation and uh, we're not gonna stop until we get a conclusion. Um, That's comforting. And I know that you can't give us everything, um, but do you have evidence that can prove the case when and if you do find a suspect? Like I said, that's part of the investigation. The answer is no. And uh, I know people are frustrated with uh, us holding that so tight. Um, but when we can um, provide any... And here's what's crazy is I hear so many of you guys out there saying, do they have Jack's DNA? Do they have what's-his-name's DNA? I don't think they have the killer's DNA, if you want to know the truth. I don't think they got the killer's DNA. And I know that may come to a shock to, as a shock to a lot of you, but it's possible they don't got the killer's DNA at all. Just saying, especially if it was somebody close, how are you going to prove that? The updated information, we, we will. I can guarantee you that. Unless it's under the fingernails. People who may not understand or may have that frustration of why aren't they telling us more? Well, that would you hold back some jeopardize the investigation. Well, you always hold back information on any case that you work. But one this big, you hold back because you want to have an unbiased um, jury pool. And um, it, it's not just about today. It's about um, in a year from now or whenever <laughs> um, we make an arrest and, and go to jail. Um, we want to have that pool of people who can look at the... He, he, he's like, man, I, a year from now when we make an arrest. Oh, man. Bro, this case is cold. It's not going anywhere. Now we're just making videos talking shit. Let's just call it what it is. This case is going cold. Do you understand once it reaches the year mark, it's officially, for the most part, a cold case. Now they'll try to say it's not. They'll try to say they're investigating. They'll try to say they still got leads and they don't got leads now. They admitted it the other day. We did a video on it. They said we don't have any, any, any suspects, any people of interest, any leads. That all they have is tips. And no, leads and tips are not the same thing. Case and, and not have all the facts to that um, to make oh. um, the decision um, to uh, find this person guilty. The best way I could give you an example of the difference between leads and tips, just kind of throwing it out there, and some of you guys may disagree. I don't know if you guys have ever been a, co uh, te a telemarketer, but like, I liken the tips to like a cold case. It's just a, a cold call. It's just the names and the numbers, essentially. Leads, in my opinion, are something that is solid. A so, well, I guess you can call it a solid lead. Would lead to an act In the sales world, it would lead to an actual sale. Same thing here. That's the way I kind of separate tips from leads. T tips are kind of like cold calls. They're just names and numbers. Leads are you, what you can then get from the cold call list. If that makes, I don't know if that makes sense to any of you. I don't know if any of you have ever been in sales or telemarketing or anything like that. It's just kind of my analogy, kind of what I liken it to. What's the, D the timeline on DNA or lab results? That's a good question. Um, that, that has everything to do with um, the lab and, and how long they take to do uh, what they do. And we don't want to rush that, right? We want to um, ensure that we're taking our time. So that means the lab results are not back. Um, so we're just waiting for them. It's kind of a, we, we have to be patient too. We would love to have all that information immediately, but uh, like I've told people, um, you know, real life and the, and the movies are a little bit different. and. Um, you know, the movies at the end of the hour, they have, uh, have all that information. We don't get that quite that fast, but uh, um, we're going to be patient for that. Yeah, the, the CSI effect, right? Yes. Everybody's thinking that, you know, it's, it's so quick and it's definitely not that. Um, and I understand if you can't tell me, but is there DNA in this case? Like I said, uh, I can't answer that question, um, but we're, um, we've collected a lot of evidence and we're looking at it. <laughs> There's no DNA. 
There is no DNA. I mean, there is DNA, but not the DNA. I'm telling you right now, this case is going cold. Every aspect of it. Um, and I know there's been funding from the governor to aid in the investigation, so how is that money being used? That's still ongoing, and that's actually at a level a little above me. I, I just present the numbers to our city uh, supervisor and to the mayor, and uh, then they um, work with the governor to determine that. So, um, and I, I'm still familiarizing myself with all of the aspects of this, but uh, when did that funding come in? So that was probably three weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe even when um, I think uh, Colonel Wills announced that there would be some uh, money made available. So. We're just working through the processes of, you know, um, where it goes and, and how it's used. Mm -hmm. um, has this case changed any policies within the Moscow Police Department or, or changed the way that you go about investigating? It has not. Um, we've always been um, very quick to secure scenes. We've always been very quick to call in ISP, and we've always been very quick to call in our federal partners, FBI, ATF, um, depending on the, the type of the case. Um, of who we need the specialty from. So um, I know there's a lot of confusion out there that um, we're a small department, but we do utilize our resources and we utilize them very well. Mm -hmm. What about with getting information out to people and the media? Um, I know there was some criticism yep. at the beginning about how um, quickly information was coming out and the idea that there was not an ongoing yep. threat to the public and then people were concerned that there was not a, a suspect under arrest and, right. and that. So I take responsibility for um, information not getting out as, as fast as possible. Um, I probably should have been much quicker on that, but um, in the beginning of these, you know, we're a small department, so everybody's working on on this case, and to me, me to be included. But, um, you know, we realized pretty quickly that we needed to get information out. That's why we called in the PIO team. Um, and they, they've helped us um, get information, and I think we've been much much better at that um, since that time. <clears throat> you know, the uh, um, some of the information early on, we you don't like I said, you don't release a, a ton. Um, I wish I would have been. I ha had a press conference earlier, but uh, like I, said, I take responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, probably another one of those that might be hard to answer, but. When will the department release the 911 call, or is, can we expect that to be publicly released? I think it, it'll be released um, when the prosecution believes that we can release that. That may be at trial. That may be before then. Um, so we're not going to get the 911 call until they got a suspect. That's exactly what we're going to We just heard. Because well, listen to what he just said. The 911 call will be up to the prosecutor. Prosecutor, what prosecutor? There's no criminal charges being filed. So there's your answer. We're not getting a 911 call until they make an arrest. But some of that, you know, we make a decision as a team of investigators and administration as well as our um, prosecutor's office. So we want to make sure that we hold that until um, it's, it's no longer, um, not that it's not needed, but um, it, it, it's okay for the case. Um, is there something specific on the call that you believe could lead to an arrest? Like I said, I uh, can't discuss that. Um, it's part of the investigation, but as soon as we can release that information, we will. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this may be the last question. Um, we know that at least one victim's family has hired a, a private detective. Have you yeah. spoken with that detective or the private investigator? Um, are you kind of in contact with... Um, we're in contact with all the families um, daily. Uh, we have a representative from the police department that um, communicates with them. Um, I have not been in contact with the private investigator. Um, I think the same family has an attorney, um, which we have been in contact with the attorney, and we, and we actually channel all of our um, stuff through the attorney. Okay. Um, anything else that you can think to add or anything you want you know, I think the biggest thing is uh, just the outpouring of support we've had across uh, the community, across our state, and across our nation. Um, we've received um, multiple emails, uh, food, um, all cards, you name it. We've um, People have reached out to us and, and thanked us for the hard work, and we'll continue to work hard. Yeah, um, and that's the thing is because people do appreciate it. 
And people do want to help you. I'm just saying that, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but in this case particularly, they really went hard on people on the internet. He threatened to arrest them. That shows you how dumb he and you are. Because you really believe he can. You genuinely believe. And don't get me wrong. People that are defaming characters, they could be sued. But, but you guys really believe that YouTubers or people su suspecting or, or uh, people, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Theorizing is illegal. Bitch, we live in America. We got a First Amendment. I could, say, I, I could sit here and say, I think this cocksucker did it. And he can't do shit about it. That's what bothered me with this cop. He flat out lied to you, and because you motherfuckers don't know the law, you believed it. I saw your comments all over the place on all kinds of videos. It's not illegal to speculate. And I'm going to be honest with you. Let's take the lady in the TikTok videos. She didn't even commit a crime. Now, what she did, she did the fame so she might lose the lawsuit, but do you know how hard it is? See, y'all saw Alex Jones lose a lawsuit, and you think, every, you think defamation of character is an easy case to prove now. You genuinely believe that. I've been sued six times. I'm 6-0 and against them lawsuits. And my defense in every single one was the exact same thing. Freedom of speech. First Amendment, baby. First Amendment. That's the way this works. You can suspect, you can speculate, you can commentate, you can, you can theorize. It's not illegal. This ain't Orwell's 1984 just yet. Just yet. We're going to work until, um, like I said, we get a completion of this case. All right. So that was the interview there. And that was a quality interview. You, some of you guys have probably seen it. Some of you guys probably haven't. Counseling for the cops. They're triggered. They're all hurt because of all the, all, the, all the pressure. Because of people like me, people like you, people wanting to know the answer to everything, right? They're, they're, they're really under a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. Just curious. Do any of you guys go see uh, therapists go over your job? You Safeway grocery baggers and Taco Bell workers. Man, everybody's got pressure at the job, bro. My pressure comes in the fact that I don't receive a paycheck. I got my shit, you know, like, like any other salesman, things like that. It's commission based type, it's crowd funded, it's customer driven. It's the way it works. And it is stressful. Life is stressful. It's even more stressful if you have to take time out of your fucking work day to go. Talk to a shrink. I'll let you guys make the decision because I know I'm, you guys are going to disagree with everything I just said. Because how many of you motherfuckers are on psychotropic drugs and see Medica and see, oh, I'm, I'm bipolar. No, you're not. You're just a crazy whore. Back in my day, we just called it a crazy bitch. They're like, no, I'm bipolar. Send me a check. We get it. Everybody, do you guys know that 75% of our country here in America is on some sort of psychotropic, psychotropic drug? Psychotropic drug? That's insane. That's insane. I'll let you guys think about that how you want to. Guys, let me know what your comments are in the comments section. This was a long ass video. Sorry about that. I may be live. We, man, we had a great live last night on the other channel. Uh, there is a new Discord. I'll put the link in the description box. It'll be the first top link. If you guys made it to the end of this video, thank you guys so much. And if you like what I do here, you can find my content valuable. Feel free to hit the links down below. Support the channel. Join the gun squad today. I love you guys. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time with JB Gunner. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.